So here we are, 7.8b in elementary algebra, talking about variation. And we are on example 12 under application. So these are the actual story problems where you kind of get an idea of how variation is actually used. So the cost of a certain kind of candy varies directly. So that tells me automatically what formula I'm going to use. So it's kind of nice just to put that on there, varies directly with the weight. Okay, so you can use this formula or you can use the um, uh, different letters depending on what you've got. Um, so maybe I want to say um, the cost varies with the weight. So the cost of a certain kind of candy, so maybe I put C for cost instead of a Y, varies directly with the weight of the candy. Okay, so it just helps me to know that this is cost and this is weight instead of trying to go, what is Y, what is X, how does that all work? So you don't have to. You can use Y equals KX if that makes it easier, but sometimes putting cost and weight with a C and a W just kind of reminds you of what you're doing. All right, so there's my formula. And now let's uh, find K. If 12 ounces of the candy... Okay, so 12 ounces. What is ounces? Well, ounces is weight. So I'm going to put 12 there for weight. And let's see, what else does it say? In the cost, 1.68. Okay, so what did that do? It helped me to know that the 12 goes here instead of here because I put weight here and cost there instead of y and x. If I had an x there, it's like, okay, so what goes in here for x? Is it $1.68 or is it the 12? This way it kind of helps you to know where to put it. All right, so I divide by 12, divide by 12, and that gives me a k value because those cancel of 0 0.14 when I divide this out. Okay. So now I have my K. How much will 16 ounces cost? So I'm looking for C. I'm looking for the cost. How much? They We found our K. And what are they saying here? 16 ounces. All right, so notice what we did. We know how much 12 ounces cost. 12 ounces cost $1.68. But we want 16 ounces, so how much is that going to cost? So that's how this whole direct variation and inverse variation helps you, is you can figure out, depending on what you have, you can figure out some other options. So cost for 16 ounce would be 0.14 times 16, which would be $2.14. Okay, so 16 ounces is $2.14. All right, takes us to example 13, and then we will be done. So let's look and see what they have us do here. So we've got the intensity of light. So, you know, we're getting into some stuff that most of us don't really have a clue what we're talking about, but we can at least figure out um, how to find the answer. So the intensity of light varies inversely as the square of the distance from the source. Okay, so that's pretty freaky as far as reading that. It's like, I have no idea what they want. Okay, we do know that it varies inversely so that we know we're going to use this formula, right? It varies inversely. So let's set up the problem. The intensity of light varies inversely. So the intensity of light's first. I'm going to use an I for intensity of light instead of a Y. And I know I'm going to have a K. And what am I going to have on the bottom? Varies inversely as the square of the distance. So there's the distance, and we're going to square it. So this is the actual formula I'm going to use. This right here told me varies inversely. This here is actually the formula for the problem that we're looking at. So we can get rid of this. We're done with that. All right, so there's my formula. That's all I've got so far. 10 feet away from the source. Distance. That's what they're giving me there. Um, the intensity is 200 foot candles. It doesn't matter what foot candles are. I have no idea what a foot candle is, but I know that it's the intensity, so that 200 is going to go there. And I've got a K, and what they say the distance was? 10 feet. 
Don't forget to put your squared up there. So I have 200 equals k. 10 squared is 100. To get rid of the 100, all I do is multiply both sides by that number on the bottom. So I end up with 20,000 over here. That goes away, that goes away, those cancel. And that equals my k. Okay, so what did I just find out? I just found my k, which is what you always look for first, is 20,000. And I can get rid of everything else. I'm going to leave my formula there. All right. Last question. What is the intensity? So what I'm, what I'm doing, I'm looking for intensity. What is the intensity five feet from the source? So intensity equals, I found my K is 20,000. And what's it say my distance is? Five feet from the source. Don't forget to square your five. So intensity equals 20,000 over 25, because that's what 5 squared is. So 20,000 divided by 25, my intensity equals 800. 800 what? Foot candles, which again, I have no idea what a foot candle is, but as long as I have this answer and this ending, even though I don't understand it, I'm good to go. I mean, foot candles has got to be high. I don't know how bright the light is or something. It says how intent, but I don't really know what intent means. So anyway, that's what we've got for um, 7.8. Now let's look at the problem set. Um, 1 through 8, they're just asking you to decide whether things are inverse or direct variation. And the key thing about inverse variation and direct variation is the division sign. Um, if you look at 1, it's multiplication, so you know it's direct. Um, 7 is a division. You look at the right-hand side of that equal sign. Is it a division? Yep, it is. 1 divided by 9d squared, so it's inverse. When you get to 1 like hmm, 5, you have 4 thirds times pi times r cubed, so it's multiplication, so that means it's going to be direct variation. So um, it's just inverse is division. Direct is multiply. Express each sentence algebraically as an equation. Okay, so for numbers um, 9 through 14, you're just writing that out in a formula. So let's look at 12. Y varies directly, so it's times, as the cubed root of X. And I don't really care if you understand this right now. The next chapter will get into that. But uh, if you do, great. If you don't, that's okay, too. Um, if you want for that one, you could write y equals k cubed root of x. If you don't understand um, the symbolism here in math yet, because, again, we haven't gotten into radicals yet, but if you've done them already and you know how to do them, go for it. Um, 19 through 22. For each of the following problems, y varies directly as x. So what they're doing, so like number 20, um, that says y varies inversely, so you know you're using this formula. And like 20 says, if y is, if y is 2, x equals 1, find y when x is 4. That isn't a 4. So using this formula, and they're saying, okay, first of all, find k. 2 equals k over 1. Okay, so k equals 2. And then they say, well, what is y when x is 4? Well, y would be 2 over 4, because your 2 here goes up there, and your 4 there goes here, and 2 over 4 is 1 half. So that's what you're doing there. And 23 through 28 is basically the same thing as what I just did. And then 29 through 38 are story problems. And just remember when you're doing these story problems, um, first step is to write the formula. 
Is it a y equals kx or is it a y equals k over x? Once you do that, you look at the next set of information and you find k. Once you do that, you look at the next set of information and put the number you found k to be equal to into that formula and find the other variable that they're asking you for. And again, you don't have to understand what you're looking for. Just be able to, to, be able to do the math in order to get um, the answer. So that's it for 7.8 and chapter 7, I think. Yeah, and then we'll get into chapter 8.